Thank God this is the final review. <laughs> the D850. Uh, I actually have to break this up into two videos. The second one has to do with uh, comparing the D850 to the D500 and the Nikon D810, which is the inevitable countless questions which I've already received. Um, speculating about a camera is one thing, reviewing it's another. A uh, track record on reviewing hands on camera. I've got a perfect track record on that. I knew I would catch flack for the hybrid viewfinder videos I made about a month ago. but uh, Actually, I didn't know, but I said if. I was proven wrong. Anyway, what I didn't know at the time on the D850, which I don't have a crystal ball and I'm not a fortune teller, um, I should have stuck with a price. I was actually correct to begin with. and. Uh, I said it would be $3,300, and uh, I went off a rumor website which uh, has supposedly confirmed reports that it would be $3,900, and I was pissed. However, that wasn't the case, thank goodness. Well, I know actually a lot of people in Europe and Australia are complaining about the price of the Nikon D850. It's astronomically higher. I don't know other than import uh, fees and prices why it's so expensive there relative to other prior models. Someone will have to explain that one to me. I also didn't know the build quality. Thanks to the Taiwanese uh, teardown video, which I reported on two days ago, the D850 is built like a, a flagship Nikon camera inside. Uh, no carbon fiber or polycarbonates on the uh, central body section. Same thing on the, uh, the uh, shutter assembly frame. Same thing on the front frame, which is plastic on every other Nikon. It has actually been the one part that's been prone to uh, splits and breaks. Um, there are downsides, obviously, to magnesium. It doesn't really give. It tends to crack, whereas plastic does give and take. So, still not been an issue with anybody on a Nikon D3 or flagship camera. However, mounting a really heavy lens, there is flexure where it would actually twist off the mount. Because, by the way, just like the Nikon D... This is, this is a Nikon. It was a Nikon D500. All the Nikon... Uh, D810, D800E, D500, D750, blah, 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 are just like this, where the actual mount will actually flex, and when it flexes away from the sensor, you're like, you know, I was even using a heavy lens, and that was a little bit of flexure, even at 70 to 200. So that's good. I did not know about peaking. I did not know. However, I was the first person to report on it, thanks to the uh, Italian website that would have a backside illuminated sensor on the D850. Did not know about the awesome image rendering. And I don't suffer from uh, NTS. NTS stands for New Toy Syndrome. I do not suffer from New Toy Syndrome. I've never done a camera review like, oh my god, it's latest, greatest, it's awesome. You need to buy. I don't suffer from that crap. Um, so I didn't know about the image rendering. I didn't know about the better shadow clipping, which I was actually the first person to report on that today in testing. Over that of the Nikon, definitely over the Nikon D810, but over that of even the Nikon D500. Um, also able to report on superior uh, 3D and auto autofocus uh, track and acquisition. Most people don't differentiate the two and their importance. There's acquisition, which is acquiring your subject for tracking, and there's actual tracking. The two are two different things. A lot of people also forget that... Uh, Autofocus acquisition and tracking is not merely camera side, it's also lens side because you actually have ring ultrasonic motors, micro motors, a screw drive interface, and you have a stepper motors which are notoriously slow. So you can stick, take the most awesome camera in the world and stick a slow ass lens on it and it'll still be piss slow. So that has to be taken into account and I definitely take that into account. I notice I'm the only photography channel that mentions that really important crap. Like, oh, this camera's really fast. Or they'll say this camera's really slow. It's like, yeah, you got a really fast camera but you got a slow ass lens mounted on it. It's like a thousand dollar radio with a ten dollar antenna, which is then a ten dollar radio. Um, I know I'm getting to it. I have to go over all these details because people want me to be really thorough on the D850. No matter what I do, someone's going to say that I missed something, of course. Um, so you do have better shadow clipping on the Nikon D850. By clipping, I mean lack thereof. You actually have better tonal sh uh, shadow gradation on uh, your shadows because a lot of people talk about uh, the high-end, uh, talk about dynamic range, obviously, which includes the shadows, between the shadows, the midtones, and the speculars, but wonderfully slow, one thing that adds a definition, not only in shading, but micro contrast, which is partially due to the lens and the amount of uh, dynamic range you actually have on the sensor and or its native SNR, is shadow clipping in the tonal range. When you actually have a mostly shadow uh, shot that is, um, you know, say 60% shadows, if the camera does not render very good, actually I think this is more important than specular, because specular is close to saturation, obviously so on the sensor. 
When you have really great shadow tonal gradation, that's due to the backside eliminated sensor on the Nikon D850 here, is it actually has better SNR due to the nature of the, uh, of the, uh, of the, uh, the copper wiring that is below the uh, photo sites themselves. They're actually not bl blocking out the light. They're not causing an impedance uh, to the native SNR per unit of time and given aperture. In other words, it sees better per same unit of time and aperture. So you have better tonal gradation. I proved that in some images today. I'm wonderfully happy to report that. I actually tested that three times to be sure. And it is definitely the case. So that's wonderful news. So you have better realism in low light portraiture or low light whatever the hell it is you're doing, club photography. So even though it has the same pixel pitch as the Nikon D500, it performs better. It also performs better in specular clipping than the D500. D500 it's kind of like my sugar glider, which is a nocturnal animal with, I don't have that pet anymore, with gigantic eyeballs. It did not like bright light, and neither does the D500. That was really the only issue with the D500, but you always compensated for that by dialing in some negative exposure compensation. Don't have to do that on the Nikon D850. Not really. Wonderful. No perfect camera. And any camera really has no idea what exposure is, and you can easily clip the shadows on any camera, but the D500 was much more prone to it, and I can gladfully, gleefully say the D850 is not prone to that. Wonderfully so, like I said, the shadow clipping, lack thereof, is better on the D850. That is wonderful news. Um, the D850 is $3,300. Currently, uh, gray market price in an icon D500, I'm going to save this for the second video, is exactly half that. $1,700 gray market. So let's discuss that in the second video. So this video, I'm not going to be discussing this camera versus D500 or the Nikon D810, really. Um, all of this time, these many years, everybody's asked me, and it didn't frigging exist. Not with Canon, not with Fujifilm, not with Sony either. The Sony A9, I tested the A9. I did a fair, fair review of it. I said, hey, the 3D autofocus tracking is just absolutely the, the tatas. It's off the hook. But it's got a really crappy 5 frame per second mechanical shutter. That's too damn slow. The ergonomics are horrible. Um, it would certainly not be the camera that I would choose for flash photography indoors. It's just too damn slow. Um, everybody's been asking me all this time about the perfect camera that does everything. And by everything, I mean landscape, architecture, portraiture, sports, action, wildlife, product photography. There's just no camera like that. Like if you did product photography and corporate photography, you know, you bought a GFX, a medium format, or really that was your only option for the hardcore unless you wanted to go with even the Sony a7R II at, what, 42-some megapixels. I mean, that's still a valid choice, but still not good enough because it had no damn lenses. It had issues with uh, interfacing with... Uh, with uh, uh, with uh, lighting, just there was just no perfect choice. Actually, product photographers are going to love this. I'm actually calling this the poor man's medium format. Really, product photographers, if they're on a budget, which most photo product photographers are not on a budget, if, like my GFX, for example, base camera with vertical grip and lens, $10,000. This without lens, a vertical grip, 3,300 plus 400 for the grip, for 100 for the uh, 150 for the battery, and 60 dollars for off-brand charger. So you're looking at right around 4,000 dollars. So 4,000 versus 10,000. This is easily 86 percent as good as the GFX Fuji is. So product photographers are. This is really their dream camera. I can absolutely say that for an absolute fact. But there's never been a camera that was perfect for doing it all. And this is the first and only time that I can actually say that. So people say, "Well, it's 3,300 dollars." You know, I mean, isn't that a lot of money? I mean, that's the exact same. Until they immediately dropped the price. When the Nikon D810 came out, it was $3,300 and immediately went to $3,100. I mean, there is no way you could consider the Nikon D810 for hardcore sports action. I mean, no, 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 no. Not on the autofocus tracking. Not on the high ISO low light. No. Certainly enough megapixels there for product photography. Obviously, 36 is more than enough. Um, but no, this is absolutely a better camera. It could do everything. You took perfect melding of the Nikon D500 and more so, and the Nikon D810. Those are two cameras. You wanted the perfect camera before the Nikon D850. If you wanted the perfect set of cameras, and a professional has a primary and a backup, if they wanted to cover their ass on everything sports, action, wildlife, portraiture, landscape, they had to buy two damn cameras, period. I don't care even if they just shot Nikon only or they shot Nikon and Fujifilm. You had to have two cameras. 
That's not the case anymore. You still need a redundant backup camera. Obviously, any camera could be lost, stolen, dropped, blah, blah, blah. Um, but there was no single camera that was just like, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, that's the camera that, uh, you know, there's no better alternative. I mean, still nothing beats medium format, for, but for crying out loud, for far less than half the money, $10,000, <laughs> GFX is still best, but, you know, for far less than half that kind of money, you know, 4000 versus 10000 this is it. Um... Peaking is wonderful on this camera. I've done a lot of testing with peaking. I mean, I'm better with manual focus lenses than most of you are. I'm not bragging about that fact, but, you know, I've talked to some of the best photographers in the world, and at F1.2 and F1.4, I don't give a damn how good of a photographer you are. Everybody struggles with nailing it on a regular DSLR at, DSLR at F1.2, F1.4. And my skills are better than yours are at that, and that is a huge welcome. Um, my Miticon 85mm 1.2, I mean, it, it's just impossible to use it 1.2 on this damn camera. Now, boom, boom, boom. Nail it, nail it, nail it. Wonderful. There is, and Nikon doesn't mention in the manual, there are two silent modes of this. There's silent mode 2, which shoots only JPEG. I mean, hold it down, 30 frames per second. It's totally dead-ass silent. There's silent mode 1, where it's actually taking, I confirm this too, shooting RAW and JPEG, or shooting RAW, whatever the hell you have it set for. And it's uh, shooting, what, uh, five fra three, fra three frames per second? Totally dead silent. So you could do... That is electronic shutter, though, of course. So you have an issue with uh, flicker issues with uh, abnormal oddball lighting, LED lighting, fluorescent, incandescent. But nevertheless, it is totally silent. So for a sports event like uh, golf or whatnot, totally silent. Shoot raw, full-size raw files, which average about 54 megabit, um, eh, megabytes uh, for 14-bit uh, lossless uh, compressed uh, RAW files on the D850. So peaking is absolutely wonderful. Um, while the D500 did come out before, obviously, the D5, D850 here, like, for example, the Nikon D700, which had the same sensor as the Nikon D3, the D700 really is the baby Nikon D3. That's what people call the Nikon D700, the baby D3, and that's exactly what the hell it was. Even though this came out second, the Nikon D500 really is the baby D850. It is. I mean, if somebody were to squint their eyes with a D500 side by side to the D850, it's like, well, those are two D500s. It's like, no. This is a bulky camera. This is 25 grams more than the Nikon D810. However, they did profile the grip like the D750 and D500, so it is a much more of a dream to hold on to. But you definitely notice the heft and the weight on this. People notice uh, that the uh, shutter, and of course it's actually uh, the flappy mirror, or the mirror, reflex mirror on this, and the shutter in combination, is loud. And that's because this camera is ringing like a bell. The side effect of making this camera, the internals, uh, beefed up with all magnesium front plate, all magnesium bottom plate, magnesium top plate, back, back plate, uh, magnesium uh, uh, central mount section, which is wonderful. There's no more flex now. There won't be any more flex like hanging a 300 millimeter f4 off of it or a 70 to 200 just holding the camera without supporting the lens which the lens mount can take but on this you get some flexure potential flexure between the actual lens and the sensor plane all of that's magnesium now so when the sh the mirror and the shutter are flapping in this camera it is loud but it's a beefed up camera so that's the side effect you have to deal with and this is the first camera from uh, Nikon that uh, actually has the uh, yeah the uh, counterbalance uh, to the shutter drive, which actually dampens. That's a key important factor that I actually noticed on this camera that at slower shutter speeds, unlike the Nikon D810, which is high enough megapixels, you'd have an issue uh, at the high megapixel where if you're hand holding the shot, 60 of a second, uh, you know, 125th of a second, irrespective of image stabilization, you'd have issues with uh, some uh, shake as uh, captured on on the uh, the pixels on the sensor and I notice this is significantly reduced so this is not hype from Nikon that you actually have less shutter shake less camera shake and therefore less blur on the sensor on this camera relative to the D810 that's absolutely confirmed there's no hype there from Nikon I said this is a poor man's medium format uh, camera as I said before um, doesn't have a specular clipping D500. Best saturation straight out of camera of any camera that I've ever used. I don't make that statement lightly. Now people said, what about the GFX? Well, that's totally different. Straight out of camera is something completely different from potential. Nothing's going to beat a huge-ass sensor. 
and the uh, better dynamic range on the Fujifilm GFX is so far. Also, it has to be enlarged a lot less to make an 8x10 or 11x17 or A4 print. So there is better potential, obviously, in that expensive uh, medium format uh, image rendering off the GFX or any other medium format camera. But irrespective of that, I can state unequivocally, and other people report this off the straight out of camera images that I posted from multiple lenses, that you know these images are absolutely, you know, blow your ass off. Is that the right words? Maybe that doesn't come out right. Melt your crotch. There we go. <laughs> That's the words I've used before. Um, here's a trick question, and so a lot of people seem to be confused on this. And uh, unlike other cameras where the pixel pitch is tighter on a DX crop sensor, which is why wildlife photographers are using, because they're always cropping the hell out of their shots, which camera has more megapixels, the D500 or the D850? Well, D500 is 28.8 megapixels, and this is 45.6. The answer is they both have the exact same megapixels. Like, what are you talking about? This is over twice as much. I'm talking about per unit area of sensor. This is exactly the damn same as an Icon D500. Same pixel pitch. That's why at basically a three quarters of a megapixel in DX crop mode this is the same as the Nikon D500. Wonderful. Why is this important for wildlife photographers? When shooting wildlife, you never know when your critters are going to jump around and flick around in the image. On the DX crop sensor, you have this much of a window for your critter to flop around in the picture in case you miss, especially important for uh, biffies, birds in flight. Critters, you know, scurrying about on the larger sensor, you have more of a picture window for that critter to flop around in your image without, <laughs> without missing them because... Obviously, you're shooting a 500 millimeter, shooting 200, 500 millimeter Nikkor, and you got the lens zoomed out to 500. The animal moves a little bit; he's going to move outside the frame of your D500 sensor. So, you actually have uh, more room in the neck of the split second to shoot uh, the animal than uh, crop the image out for uh, your wildlife photography. Um, as I said, next video I cover the D850 and D500 relative to the Nikon. Uh, D8, D500 and Nikon D810 relative to the D850 so far as what to get. I never tell anybody to sell anything. That's always unethical. So I know someone's going to ask me that question. Should I sell this to buy this? And it's unethical to answer those questions. So please don't ask those of me. Just make a, a logical, reasoned, well-informed decision based upon all information that's gathered, whether it's uh, valid and true for what it is that you're trying to do. Um, well, the D850 is basically the same megapixels in crop mode. The quality of those megapixels is abs is definitely higher, as has been proven. I mean, it should be the case. Well, it's the exact same pixel pitch and the same amount of megapixels per unit area. Per unit area, I hope you know what that means. Um, you, it's a totally different sensor, so we actually have better performance on the Nikon D850. So far as the images side by side, if you stare at them at normal viewing distance, uh, enlarged to uh, 8x10 or 11x17, I mean, most people would never notice the difference unless it was a low light shot and then you can see the D500 is definitely muddier and D500 also clips speculars as I've said easier um, is this camera expensive like relative to the Sony which I tested well that damn camera is 1000 yeah what is it one thousand two hundred dollars more expensive the ergonomics are horrible it's got a horrible five frame per second mechanical shutter no glass no support poor support they don't even fix their own cameras so is this camera really that expensive? This has peaking. You know, this has a true mechanical shutter. Everybody's talking about how fast the frame rate is on the A9. It's like, that's electronic shutter. You can't do any damn flash photography with electronic shutter. And it overheats. Nikon D850 ain't overheating. So is the Nikon D850 that expensive? The answer is hell no, it's not. Um... Mm -hmm. Yeah, the D850 information just trickled in under the wire for me on uh, on this. I wish I was able to prognosticate some of these uh, specifications. Um, final conclusion. Of course, uh, let me go over the other thing for drawing the final conclusion. Battery usage. I noticed no difference between it and um, an Icon D500 or D810. I know it uses a different discharge profile battery, which is the uh, gray colored. Now I use the regular conventional these. EN, uh, EL8, uh, EN EL15 batteries, but this is just the same battery except it has a different discharge profile. The EN EL15A, which are gray, you could use both of them in there. I notice no difference. The camera will notice that, I think, at a higher frame rate, but I don't have the vertical grip yet. It may not let you do uh, um, nine frames per second, even if you have the vertical grip, if you're using the older EN EL15 battery. I haven't confirmed that yet. 
ultimately who gives a damn um, the price and the batteries are the same just buy some of the ENEL, ENEL 15A batteries for the DA50 if that's what it requires so it doesn't choke and let you not do 9 frames per second so that's not an issue at all yeah better for shutter shake than the Nikon D810 slower shutter speeds as I said as bulky as the D810 is um, the D850 has a, a better grip profile it is heavier you notice you have a big ass bulky camera in your hand. I mean this about feels, every time I pick this up I feel like I'm picking up my Fujifilm GFX. I mean this is a this is a bulky freaking camera. Um, the touch menu on this works lovely. Um, that's the first uh, of the more, the D500 doesn't have a touch menu. You're actually able to zoom through the menus. Works perfectly on this. I made a video on that. Focus peaking works great. Uh, I did test the video and tested the the focus peaking during video, but I don't pretend to be interested in video as far as the uh, this camera goes. I'll post some test samples if you want, some video test samples at 4K. I know you can't actually do peaking in 4K on the Nikon D850, but you can at 1080p or anything under under 4K use peaking. I know some additional video features on this camera. I'll leave other reviewers to uh, criticize the video end of this camera um, or praise it. Um, interface seemed identical to the D500. I know you have more features. You have 4K. You have focus peaking. All oh, that's wonderful. Ultimately, is really that different? The, ma the owner's manual doesn't indicate any difference between it and uh, the features that I mentioned other than it and the Nikon D500. Um, oh, importantly, yeah, autofocus 3D and auto tracking is absolutely excellent on this. Extremely accurate. I noticed out of several hundred shots both today and yesterday, there were only a couple out of focus and I know those were my issues. I noticed that even with third party lenses, that uh, if a shot was about to come and I had like literally less than a, a second, literally less than a second to actually raise my camera and uh, drop continuous autofocus on the subject for shooting, even using the third party lens today, the Tamron 7200 G2. I was able to nail the shot. That was wonderful. There's no way I could do that with a D500, even though the autofocus on the D500 is absolutely exquisite. So the D850 is superior. Um, tested face detect works perfectly. Pinpoint autofocus for macro photography on tripod works excellently. I tested on the 200 millimeter macro. So important since the depth of field is so shallow. Um, I noticed also too they removed, unlike the D500, they removed the spring-loaded XQD card and they went with a push-button sliding lock for the XQD cards. I found that interesting. It means this is not susceptible to breakage. And I've never known, nor did anybody else report to me, an issue with breakage on the uh, sliding lock. Because you have a sliding lock, uh, a spring-loaded locking on the SD card, uh, identical to the D500 on this, but they changed the sliding lock mech off of the D850 that exists on the uh, Nikon the D5 and Nikon D500. So the final value on this, I mean the D500 is already legendary. Might I remind you importantly that I only named uh, three cameras legendary and I don't say this lightly because everybody's been calling me a Nikon hater lately and maybe I've been hating on some of the BS from Nikon but I'm not a Nikon hater. I'm not going to do an illegitimate review for, and I'm certainly not selling any of these so I'm not making any money if you buy one or don't buy one. I only named the Nikon D3 camera legendary, Nikon D4, D4S, basically the same camera, legendary. Nikon D500 I called legendary, everybody says I was crazy, I was an idiot for calling a $2,000 crop sensor camera legendary, totally vindicated on that. I am absolutely, and I thought about this really long and hard, went over all the details, and I'll go over this in the second video in addition to comparing it to the D500 and D810 for consideration, I can absolutely state, because I'll have to live with this and eat the words, that I will live with it with perfect comfort because I've tested the piss out of this damn camera that I can call the Nikon D850 legendary. I've owned every Nikon DSLR. I never said the D500 was a loser of a camera in many ways. I never even recommended it to anybody, price being irrelevant. I never called the D800E or the D810 legendary. Um, no. So D3 for me, and of course this is my review, it's not your review. Nikon D3, D4S, Nikon D500, and the fourth uh, digital uh, DSLR camera from Nikon I can actually call legendary is this. Why? 
There are many reasons. Not only is it everything the D500 has, but more. The one thing everybody's been asking me for is like one damn camera to do everything. Sports, action, wildlife, portraiture, landscape, architecture, product. For th there is no damn camera that does all that, much less is the best at it. You know, there the D500 can do landscape and portraiture, but no. No, no, no. I was like, I'm going to do some landscape portrait work with a crop sensor. I was like, well, of course you can, but it's not ideal for the obvious reasons, which you should know already. This is the one camera I could say with its autofocus speed, with its low light performance, with its megapixels, with its, with its accuracy and autofocus, all the things that I mentioned, this camera is, and of course, if you're working professionally, you need a damn backup camera, obviously. This is the only camera I can say, this is the freaking camera. There's never been a camera that's been able to say that. It just hasn't been. Just no. But now there is one. And it's $1,200 cheaper than the damn Sony A9. I mean, what the hell do you want? I mean, that's a steal. This camera is legendary. That's not really my opinion. I mean, it's just a hardcore empirical fact. I mean, if someone gave me, if someone said, well, I only shoot sports. I only shoot wildlife. I only shoot sports. I only shoot action. I only shoot portraiture. I only shoot landscape. I only shoot product photography. I only shoot photojournalism. It's like, doesn't matter what the hell someone shoots only. Some, some people only shoot one thing. It's like, this is the camera. It's like, I only have one camera. It's like, well, what's your budget? And they might not be able to afford it. But what's the one camera? It's like, well, this is that damn camera. Um, I have some other things that to go over, and I'll save that for the next video. But I hope you like this video. If you do, click the link below and make a small donation. Or you can tell me to jump off a cliff. Or, you know, go, like, uh, take off my underwear and jump in a, a patch of, uh, you know, a porcupines or something like that. You know, whatever tickles your fancy. But yes, the D850 is legendary. And I will be vindicated on that. Because this is camera is an absolutely exquisite value. Period. $3,300, well, I mean, $2,000 to the D500 new. So for $1,300 more, you have a camera that does it all, literally. Does it all. It's like one camera to rule them all, like the Lord of the Rings thing, right? One ring to rule them all. This is the... The one ring camera. Never been such a damn camera. They beefed up the damn camera to be identical internally as far as build quality to a flagship camera. Do you know how much the Nikon D3 was when it came out? Oh my god, it was really expensive. So this is a flagship built camera that does it all and does it all, you know, unswervingly. Nikon, in, in the past, has wanted to murder me on a few things, and some of the stuff that I said about them, but I mean, most of it was accurate, some of the stupid stuff there, but I mean, I have to be fair to this camera. This is a legendary camera. The build quality, the peaking, the BSI sensor, the image rendering, better shadow clipping. Man, that's terrific for low light, as far as doing low light fine art. For product photography, it's like, you know, this is a poor man's medium format for way less than half the money of a GFX. Still doesn't beat the GFX for obvious damn reasons, but any product photographer would just, you know, they'd get naked and smear themselves with butter and honey to be so happy with this camera. <laughs> That's a southern expression. <laughs> Incredible autofocus tracking. This is a legendary camera. Let me say that again. There we go. Thank you so much for watching. Check out video two. I talk about comparisons between this, Nikon D500, Nikon D810, relative comparisons, yada, 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 yada. There we go. That is my review of the D850. Thank you. Bye.